all of us is a an attack on welfare state reform. It lashes out at those who make decisions uh, from the perspective of the many without considering the impact they will have on the individual. It is a political diatribe, but a very British, polite diatribe. Francesca Martinez's debut play is unsettling, dramatic and thought-provoking. If you sliced it through the middle, you would see the word worthy jumping out at you. It also has just the right amount of left-wing bias. In all, it is ideal for the National Theatre's Dorfman stage. It is unquestionably a story that needs to be told, but the telling of that story could be done so much more effectively. writing the script, Martinez has been fortunate enough to land the central role of Jess, a woman who has worked hard to become the successful therapist she is today. Jess has cerebral palsy. She is a bit wobbly, as she likes to put it, much as Martinez is famous for doing so herself. In fact, not for this reason alone, the character of Jess is less a character and more Martinez, the anti-bureaucrat in the therapist's cardigan. At the beginning of the play, Jess is having her PIP, her personal independence payment reassessment. Reassessment for a lifetime condition seems absurd to those who don't have to deal with it, but it is part of the welfare reforms. The assessor is new, she is rushed, she has targets to meet, and the questionnaire seems designed to trap people into saying the wrong thing. As such, the outcome of the assessment sees Jess lose her car, which means losing her independence and her job. This in itself would be enough to be the crux of a play. But no, not here. It is only one tiny sliver of the many, many stories crammed into three hours of a play which seems determined on proving the awe of all of us. Other wrongs are done against a, an array of characters that include three wheelchair users, all with different uh, disabilities, a middle-class alcoholic, uh, a lesbian single mother who is not out to her father, a Polish carer, a PTSD sufferer, there are others. Each represents a different example of a life adversely and perversely affected by cutbacks. Not just physical disability, mental disability and emotional disability too. We have the whole gamut covered here. A point repeatedly made in this uh, array of individuals is that individuals are never to blame. Government is to blame. Carers are uh, pressured to meet deadlines. Friends are helpless to offer support if they aren't asked for help. Everyone, it seems, is doing their best. It's only when the politician comes in to act two that blame does become personal, directed at the character himself and, I guess, all he represents. You'll we'll know Francesca Martinez as Rachel Burns in Grange Hill, one of the first characters on mainstream television to have cerebral palsy. Since then, she has um, become a popular stand-up comedian, published a best-selling novel, and often appears on the comedy panel show circuit. Primarily, you will know her for being one of the few recognisable faces of disability in the media. She's used her platform to advocate for disability rights, and she has been a staunch and vocal political supporter of Jeremy Corbyn. This background is worth mentioning because it cl has clearly shaped the development of all of us, both in the tale and the telling. It is politically charged and it is very anti-Tory, but it also uses the melodrama in a way that a soap would or a piece of young adult fiction. Plot points seem motivated by their potential for impact on the audience rather than being really necessary or realistic character developments. They come prefaced with big, bold, lettered signposts you can always hear this. <laughs> to enable these dramatic moments to happen, characters often do sudden vault facets. 
for example, a friend who previously had shown no uh, sign of despair commits suicide. It follows a scene that, that ends with the, the character looking wistfully, saying they hope there is anything to hope for in the future. A single successful attempt after having told their carer to say an um, implied last hello to the group. Uh, there's another character who is at one point just as angry, slightly overacted alcoholic patient who suddenly becomes her lover. Uh, they, they skip from sharing to fucking, foregoing any flirtation and with no noticeable chemistry. It, it jars because there's no through line. It's the stuff of soap. It seems to be on the beginning and the end of the character arc with no care given to the journey that gets them there. For a political story, not everything is doom and gloom, you'll be pleased to know. There are moments of comedy that are very self-aware and self-deprecating. Jokes are used to burst our own inner prejudices and our assumptions of disability. Martinez gives most, if not all, of the gags to her own character. Possibly greedy. But possibly easier, because the humour is very much in the style of the stand-up for which she is known. It may include gags that have been done on the stand-up. At one point he does exclaim, what the fuck is normal? Which may be a coincidence, but is also the title of her book. All of this reminds me of a persuasive charity fundraising campaign, the sort you might see advertised on television over the Christmas. It's known in charity circles that the way to raise money is to personify the statistics. And that's what Martinez has done here. It gets our sympathies by sharing the faces of real people behind the headlines, the individual rather than the many. And it paints a bleak picture of uh, an out of touch government that values bureaucracy over empathy. It is a play that, that calls for change, but I'm not sure who it is making that call to. The audience going to the National Theatre during the typically quiet month of August will be many people who will either acknowledge the unfairness of it all and write to their MP, or be living it themselves and writing to their MP. As a play, it lacks the originality needed to, to open this up to a wider world. It's a very difficult sell to somebody who doesn't already want to see it. I would theorise that perhaps there is a bigger aim here. Um, if we can get the attention of the right producer and the right channel, it would seem a natural choice for a, a TV adaptation of an hour drama in Channel 4 or BBC Two. It would then force some major, major cuts to be made, which would be helpful. Maybe then the tale could get the telling and the audience that it deserves.